Welcome to Chicago Public Library's Art Beyond Borders with Amanda Zagloba from the Harold Washington Library Arts and Music Department. This program is part of the One Book, One Chicago 2020 season, exploring the theme Beyond Borders and the book Exit West by Mohsen Hamid. Today we're going to be making a resist dye handkerchief. But first, I'm going to discuss a little bit about resist dyeing and its history. Resist dyeing is when you add a barrier on top of the textile to prevent the dye from actually seeping through into those areas. There's many different types of resist dye and they range across the world from Asia with shibori, batik, and ikat designs, um, as well as in Africa with mud cloth and in the Americas as well. So today, for our resist dye, we're going to need a number of materials. We're going to need um, a fabric that you can use to dye on. Make sure it is washed and dried and ironed as well to make it easier to add your resist. And we're actually going to be using Elmer's school glue as our resist. Uh, if you get the blue one, it'll be easier to see as you apply it. You can also purchase pre-made resist um, glues that you can use on your fabric as well. You'll also need a variety of paint brushes to add your design onto our fabric. It's easier if you use the paint brushes versus using the tip of your glue just because it will end up giving you too much glue and ruining your design. You'll also need something to dye your material with and that can range from basic craft glue combined with a textile medium to make it better absorbed by the fabric. An immersive dye like a liquid or a powder that you just add to water. Or the easiest of all, a spray dye that you can just spray on your fabric and it'll be finished. This project is also a little messy, so make sure you've laid down paper, preferably uh, wax lined paper to prevent your fabric from sticking to the surface and the paper itself. So our first step is just to lay down our fabric. And as when I ironed, I made sure to iron it in a grid because I particularly like a symmetrical design and it's easier for me that way. And I also found that some of the flatter brushes uh, make it easier to do lines, whereas if you want more of a vine-like thing, the round brushes will work better. You're simply going to take your glue or your resist and add a small amount to a container. And then you can start adding your design. I'm going to do a geometric design because those are the designs I prefer. And you want to make sure that you add enough glue to the fabric so that it absorbs, but not so much that you lose your design. The paintbrushes should help with this, but just be aware that if you add too much glue, it'll absorb in the fabric and spread out. Once you have your entire design laid out, you're simply going to take your dye that you're going to use. If you decide to use craft paint, just mix the craft paint and the textile medium together in the amounts listed on the back and brush it on. This is called a uh, dry dye. Uh, if you have a, an immersive dye, we're not actually going to be using it as an immersion because it will take and wash away the glue. So what we're going to do instead is you will simply add your immersive dye to a cup, add some water. You'll take a large paintbrush or a sponge 
and simply brush it over your fabric uh, without pressing too hard to make sure that you don't erase your glue. And then that'll, that will dye your fabric and leave your resist in place. The easiest way is, of course, your spray dye, in which case, if you're using this, all you have to do is make sure you have a nice, large set piece of paper that you can spray on because it's gonna be messy, and simply spray across the fabric until you have it design, the design you way you want. Spray dye will make it easier to do multiple colors if you wanna give more of a batik effect and toss in a couple of different colors and designs. Uh, so if you decide you wanna do that or a tie dye effect, you can use the spray dye pretty easily for that. Once you've added your dye, you're gonna leave it and then you'll follow whatever instructions come with your dye. If you use the craft paint with the textile medium, you will need to take and heat set it at the end once it's dry. And sometimes with the immersive dyes, you need to do that as well. Once everything has been completed, your heat setting and your drying, you're gonna simply wash it. You'll wanna wash it by itself the first two or three times to make sure all the dye has gotten out before you wash it with other clothing. And then you'll be set. And you'll have your own resist dye piece of fabric. That's it for this episode, but stay tuned for more Art Beyond Borders, as well as dozens of other virtual events, reading recommendations, blogs, and more throughout the One Book, One Chicago 2020 season. For more information, visit onebookonechicago.org for details. See you next time.